Welcome to Creative Living, where we help you live your most creative life. I'm Jane Manzuras, and on today's show, we're talking about ways to repurpose, reinvent, and reuse old items. I like to call it upcrafting. It's good for the environment, and you're also making something beautiful. But first, here's what's coming up on the show. A woman who is redefining what it means to smelt the flowers. Some inexpensive design tricks that can update any room. And a cute Halloween costume idea you can make in no time. That and so much more on this episode of Creative Living. Joining us today is Jason Carlisle from Stardust Building Supplies. Now, Jason, Stardust is literally a dream come true for anybody who is a DIYer, a maker, or like they like to repurpose or recycle. Absolutely. We have a 40,000 square foot warehouse chock full of building materials such as cabinet doors, drawers. Uh, we have lumber. We get cabinetry, appliances, doors, windows, toilets, water heaters, AC units, I mean you name it, anything that could be pulled out of a typical remodel. We try to keep from going to the landfill and keep it recirculating to our community. So if you're looking for something that needs upcycling, this is the place to go to find it, to make something new, or take something old and make something new, which is what I like to say. But you know, sort of your message is to inspire people to create. Absolutely. As soon as you create something with your own two hands and you get your idea and it comes together in a, in a good completion, then it has that much more meaning to you. It's that much more of a personable you know, aspect of something that you did and it feels good to create things. It's yeah. a, lot, a lot of fun, a lot of endless options as far as what you can do with some simple materials that we host. And it's like the sense of satisfaction that you did it yourself. Absolutely. That's always my favorite thing. Isn't that it, great? Yep. So what are we making today? Because I see drawers. So on we're going to make a bar cart today that you could roll around the house and take anywhere, put it in every other room. Um, we've got simple cabinet drawers that we sell for like $2 a piece. we got some lumber that we sell for a dollar. Two dollars a stick. Is this just trim? This is just trim that we have that we pulled out of a place and got donated to us. We have a wine rack that I've uh, cut in half here to make fit in there. We got some extra drawer handles here. We got casters ah, and screws. And that's a, a shelf that I've actually cut to the same dimensions as this drawer here. So once we get all three of these kind of tiered up and snapped together with these, that's the majority of the work right so there. So we're using five different pieces from five different items that were once used for something else. Absolutely, which would have typically been thrown into our landfills and uh, taken up space in there. So we're able to keep five million pounds out of our landfill by accepting this as a donation and giving our anybody in our community is the potential to recreate and do whatever they need. Right, let's get making because I want to be able to see how this is done because I might want to make one later. All so right. we're going to start with the drawer. I'm going to start with the top piece here. Do you I've want cut this? these to three feet each. Move this over a little bit. I just want to get in there and see it. <laughs> I'll hold the edge. So we got four screws to kind of put these in which we've pre-drilled the holes so we're not splitting any wood as okay. we go. If you want to hand me of three more I of those. Of course I do. And we'll just stick these inside here. Lock it. Easy. Lock it in place. And one more screw. And so we're going to do this to, to four, all four sides of the straw, right? All four sides of it. So okay. the next piece would be to get, we'll get another one of these on here. And, and we'll, while you're doing that, Jason, he's going to come back with us in just a little bit to show us what this finished bar cart looks like. Let me help you. Thank you. In this craft room crash, we'll introduce you to an artist who's putting the metal to the pedal. This is Craft Room Crash, and I'm in Dwight, Illinois, on Old Route 66 outside DIYer Marla Kincaid Shop. Now, she says creating art is hard, dirty work, but scrap metal can be romantically beautiful. So let's go crash your craft room and find out what Marla is making today. Hey, Jane. Hey, Marla. Let's go check out my craft room. Let's do it. Hey, Jane, welcome to my craft room. This is it. Ow. <laughs> oh my God, this is... This is my space. It's really industrial. It is. <laughs> I am a welder who makes art. Really, if you want it made out of metal, I'll make it. <laughs> There's a lot of metal and like dirty things. Yes. I oh, love it. Piece by piece, I'm putting something back into somebody's yard that's already been used in the world. So I'm recycling stuff that goes back into it. So these, all this right. is all some of your creations. These are things. My high heel shoe <laughs> for... <laughs> 
needs. needs. I'm kind of a tomboy, so, and I grew up with my dad in a welding shop. Started loving it, not realizing at an early age I understood it and didn't think this was a career a girl went to, but then when I got older, I was like, why can't I do that, you know? So what are we gonna make today? Um, today we're gonna make a single flower. It's the first flower that I sort of ever created. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pick out a piece of metal to make our flowers. We're going to trace out all the petals that we use. Is that like a pattern piece? It's a pattern, yep, so yeah. I keep a pattern of can all I the trace flowers. It? You sure can. This is probably the only thing I'm gonna be able to do today. <laughs> we're going to cut them out with a plasma cutter. That's the mark that it's gonna do when we start cutting. What if those things hit my legs? Oh, well, I ah! And then we're going to buff them up and make them shiny. I'm gonna stand right here. Okay, and so depending on how many sparks of metal, I'm gonna move back. Okay, all right. Oh. Ah! Ah! After we make them shiny, we're going to bend them in our arbor press so they have a little depth. Perfect, so now we, we got did it. it. Now we got it. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. We will attack each petal onto the flower. That's it? Yep, that's it. Nuh uh super quick. Wow, that's bright. We will attach a stamen to the center, and we're done with our flower. All right, and then we finish with that. Then once we do that, all we have to do is pull our little our little stamens out in the middle, and we turn this way, and we're all set. Wow. The flower is done. That's amazing. <laughs> Thanks so much to Marla. Now we all know how to make a metal flower, and that is what Marla is doing in her craft room. What are you doing in your craft room? I'll see you next time. <laughs> I wonder if any of the bees actually go in there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, actually. September is National Sewing Month, so it's a great time to learn how, because with a sewing machine and a little know-how, you can refashion your old clothes and even make your own home decor. Here's what's coming up next on Creative Living. We take a trip to Tombstone to see why tourists are flocking to this western town. Plus, some creative ideas to spruce up your fall table. One place that has reinvented itself into one of the most popular tourist destinations in the Southwest is Tombstone. So let's go visit this western town. Tombstone was a very dangerous place to live, probably in 1881, 1882. It was even written in the Tombstone Epitaph that Tombstone had a man for breakfast every day. Tombstone was founded in 1879 by uh, Ed Shefflin. In 1877, he, de he came out here and he discovered silver. And it took him a while to actually get back here. When he was coming through here and he's looking for silver, he runs into a bunch of Buffalo soldiers. And the Buffalo soldiers tell him, what are you doing out here in this infested Apache territory? And he goes, well, I'm looking for silver. And the one made a comment as he's almost falling off his saddle laughing. and goes, the only thing you're gonna find out here is your tombstone. And so then he finds silver and after they name the town Tombstone. Most people know Tombstone for the gunfight at the OK Corral. In 32 seconds, 26 shots are fired and three men lay dead. Uh, Billy Clanton, Tom, and Frank McClory. Tombstone is definitely a tourist uh, uh, destination. You can come on down and see a gunfight in Tombstone every day. That's the, that's the neat thing about Tombstone today is uh, coming down and checking out the gunfights. There's the OK Corral that does a reenactment. And so across the street from us is the Gunfighter Palace and they put on gunfights and they do it inside to show you how it would have been like in the uh, 1880s. Right now we're standing in the Birdcage Theater, and this was all the ca this is the casino floor area. Everything's original: the floors, the ceilings, the wallpaper. Uh, these are the cribs upstairs uh, where the ladies plied their trade to their men customers. 
Underneath are the wings, and that's where they had gambling all the way back to the two lower birdcage cribs. I always tell people there are five historical landmarks to see in Tombstone. There's the birdcage, the courthouse, the graveyard, the OK Corral, the rose tree, and St. Paul's Episcopalian Church. Uh, that was built in 1882, and Wyatt, Virgil, Morgan, a lot of people in town, uh, Mr. Klum, they all put money in to help build that church. Tombstone's open seven days a week. Uh, if you're in between Tucson and uh, Benson, Arizona, um, take the 303 exit to the 306 exit and come down 28 miles Highway 80 to Tombstone and come see us. As the season changes, so should your home decor. Well, with a little inspiration, these easy DIY ideas will have you cozying up to autumn in no time. So first, set the tone on your dining room table with a glass vase filled with painted pine cones. Create an ombre look on the edges with a dab of paint. It's easy, just pick your favorite fall colors to make the mix. And next, your silverware can have a touch of seasonal class too by creating 3D leaf napkin holders. Just dry some hot glue in a silicone mold and paint it to create that colorful seasonal look. And the kitchen is always bustling in the fall with school days, football weekends, and holiday cooking. So add the harvest theme to your cookery nook with these easy iron-on pot holders. Print a design you like on an iron-on sheet and add it to a plain pot holder. Super cute easy and they make great gifts. Now you can repurpose those empty sauce jars to make a pretty mantle display. Just paint the glass jars, wrap a piece of burlap ribbon around each of them, write something on the ribbon and add flowers to complete the look. And you can swap out your wall art every season when you create clever canvas paintings with stencils and a little love. And since everything is pumpkin in the fall, use an old frame, velour fabric, buttons, and costume jewelry pieces to create a pumpkin-themed piece of art. Just beautiful. And finally, since I'm flushing out all of the fall DIY ideas, get your bathroom ready with the ones and twos of our fall theme and create toilet paper roll decor. Simply wrap a roll of toilet paper with a remnant piece of fabric, stick a paper rod down the center to secure the loose edges, add in a faux leaf and tie it up with a bow, and you have a spare roll ready to go. So there you have it with these easy DIY ideas. You can transform your home into a fall festival as fast as those leaves are changing colors. During your lifetime, you'll produce 600 times your weight in trash. Now that is a lot of trash and a great reason to upcycle. Now, if you need some help, there's a ton of resources online and you'll find clever ways to repurpose old ladders and even recycle plastic spoons. Stick around, there's more coming up on Creative Living. A design expert gives us easy and inexpensive ways to update your home. And we finish up the bar cart that Jason is repurposing for us. good DIY idea, especially when it comes to design. So check out these creative tricks when it comes to updating your home without busting your budget. Hello, I am Deborah May Himes, Deborah May Himes Interior Design and Associates. And today I'm going to be talking to you about inexpensive tricks for updating your home. One of the best ways to do is just with paint. Paint is cheap and sometimes that can just really give you a fresh, updated look and make you feel like everything's clean again. I also like to talk about using pillows. It's expensive to change your furniture out, but if you have neutral fabrics or leather furniture, then it's easy to update with new pillows and the fresh colors and updated colors or using area rugs. Area rugs can give you that pop of color that you 
we really love and then also adds that personality to the space. Rearranging your furniture is a wonderful way to fresh up your space. So rearranging your furniture should be around how you use that space. It could be about conversation areas. It should have spaces where you can have a quiet uh, time to read a book or watch TV. So look at how you use your space and make sure that the, the way you arrange your furniture is more purposeful. I like to use larger artwork instead of lots of small pieces. And that's the same for accessories. Use larger important pieces instead of a lot of little things makes a simpler, more dramatic statement and a more powerful room. Updating your home can just breathe life back into your space. Jason from Stardust Building Supplies has been here making this really cool bar cart from old dresser drawers and trim. Jason, what do you have left to do? The last step we're going to do is put this handle on here so we have something to grab it by. And we're going to cinch him on nice and tight after pre-drilling those holes, lock him oh, in that's place. that's really great. All right, what did you do between the last time I saw you and now? Because a lot has been done here. All we've had to do is go through it and pre-drill some holes, sink them in there so we're holding this all together. It's nice and sturdy. Uh, we put this bottom shelf in here. Well, what are we going to do to finish it? To finish it, you could add some casters if you desire. On this one, we're going to keep it simple and leave the casters off. And then you spray paint it when it's all done. Tape everything off that you don't want spray paint on. And then that's about it. So let's show everybody what it's gonna look like because I love this. Look at this bar cart. So these are three dresser drawers and this is This is trim board trim. that we found in the store. And yeah. It, and it's added some rope here to kind of give it a little bit of aesthetic pleasure. And then uh, the wine rack holding these uh, glasses in there. and. A little plant, whatever you desire to put on here to fulfill your car. Where did you come up with this idea? It's so great. Uh, we researched it online and found that these were pretty simple to put together. So we just looked in upon our store to see what we had and what we could put together and this came out. And just using like real basic items that you might find in like a home remodel store or just maybe in your own house. Exactly. That you can put this together, have your own barn cart. How would you recommend somebody get started if they want to repurpose a piece of furniture? Come down to our location. We could talk you through a few projects that we have in mind. We can throw, show you the uh, materials necessary and give you a little bit of guidance as to how to do it. Also, Pinterest is a good thing to follow and kind of get ideas from. And yeah. You can Google search anything nowadays and find instructions on how to build and create Tons stuff. Tons of resources online. I love that. Why do you think it's important to repurpose stuff in general? And, and I was going to say repurpose furniture, but the reality is, is you're taking old items and you're making them new again, aside from the fact that you did it yourself. Why is it important? The best piece is, is you're keeping usable materials out of the landfill. Stardust is keeping 5 million pounds, over 5 million pounds a year out of our landfills right now. And that's annually. So, I mean, it just it shows the amount of materials that can be reused, recreated, and repurposed into something of your own. And it just it makes it more fun and it makes it more personable. It's something that has your touch to it. You built it with your own hands. Yeah. And it comes out beautiful. And the cool items like this cool bar cart. What is the craziest thing you've seen made from some of the items in the warehouse? I would say one of the coolest things was uh, we had a customer create a chandelier out of a dryer basket. He took a dryer apart, took the basket, used some conduit to connect it to the ceiling, and made a beautiful chandelier. It sounds a little off and out there, but it's, it came out really nice. And the fun part about repurposing these old items is sometimes you never know what they once were. That's it. And if you could look at something and not guess where it's from and it looks really nice, that's kind of fun for the person that created it to pull that trick on somebody. And then you could also give them away as a gift, too. Absolutely. I love that. I loved that handmade touch. Thank you so much, Jason. You are amazing. Thank you very much for having us here. We appreciate it. Uh, thanks so much to Jason for showing us this great project. If you're looking for something to repurpose, you got to head over to Stardust. They have a warehouse full of really cool items. Just head to their website for more information. Coming up next, we've got an easy to make costume for your little pumpkin this Halloween. Dressing up is one of the most fun things about Halloween, but it can be expensive. So let's get creative and make a costume your little one will love. This inventive pumpkin costume is made from a repurposed pillowcase. It's really easy, super cheap, and you can make it at home in no time at all. So let's get started.
You'll need an orange pillowcase. You can get one online or steal one from your mom's 1970s linen closet. Green ribbon, black felt, an old folder, chalk, and fabric glue. At the opening end of the pillowcase, cut two two-inch slits on the side seam. Now this is where you'll thread the ribbon through the hole and out the other side. It ends up being the neck of the costume. And it represents the stem of the pumpkin. To make the armholes, measure five inches from the neckline. And for smooth, fatigue-free cutting, use your Kai scissors to cut an opening four inches long. This makes it easy for the child to wear a warm sweatshirt underneath the costume for hours and hours of trick-or-treating. Cinch the top and tie a bow, and we're ready to move on to the pumpkin face. Cut out a stencil drawing of eyes, nose, and a mouth for your pumpkin face. It can be as traditional or funny as you want it to be. I like to use an old folder to make my stencils. Lay your stencils on the felt, trace around them with chalk, and cut them out. Position your pumpkin face on the center of the pillowcase and use fabric glue to attach it. Next, with your Kai scissors, cut the bottom of the pillowcase. That's the end seam where the pillowcase is already sewn together. Fold up the raw edge, iron it flat, and hem it using a liquid stitch or sewing machine or needle and thread. Add a few stitches to gather the lower left and right sides to create a ruching effect for the curve of the pumpkin. There you have it, an easy, inexpensive, adorable pumpkin costume made from an upcrafted pillowcase. Thanks so much to Jason for his great advice on remaking furniture. Before we go, here's some great reuse ideas for you. If you have an old wood ladder lying around, you can hang it on the wall for a unique bookshelf. Old tennis rackets can be turned into wall mirrors in a few easy steps. And this person really got creative by using their old bike as a sink base. How cool does that look? As you can see, the sky's the limit when it comes to repurposing items, so let your imagination run wild. Thanks so much for joining us right here on Creative Living. I'm Jane Monzuris, and I'll see you next time.